Hello. Welcome to Skills to Succeed session number three. My name is Tom Shipley and I'm a volunteer in this program presented by Accenture. This video is a recap of a presentation prepared by my friend Reese James and presented by our friend Levi Gingrich. We met today at the Better Family Life Center in St. Louis and we had a pretty good turnout. This video is intended to reiterate the material for those who participated as well as help anyone who is absent stay on track with the program. So let's get started by talking about the point of the resume. Think of it as a sales brochure about you. It's not supposed to be a meticulously detailed record of your entire career, but instead a summary that highlights your skills and experience. Every resume is unique. People have different styles of writing and formatting, and that's okay. You may not necessarily use the same resume for every job, and in many cases, you want to customize your resume to fit the job description of the role you're trying to fill with the employer. Interviewers will usually use the resume as a guide for their interview questions. You need to make sure you're prepared to talk about every item that you have in the document. And you need to keep your resume up to date with not only your skills and experiences, but also with your contact information. We'll talk more about this later. Okay, for our agenda today, we'll talk about something Reese calls the wow factor. And then we'll review three different types of resumes, skills, chronological, and hybrid. We'll talk about the different sections of the resume, formatting and language, some do's and don'ts, interview questions to start thinking about, the concept of the master resume, and some technical tips about saving and sending your resume from a computer. Okay, let's talk about the how factor. Showcasing your skills and methods of accomplishing tasks holds high value to the employer. It illustrates to them your thought process, but you have to remember to be specific. For example, you could say, able to lead others by organizing meetings. But it would be better if you would write, able to lead others by scheduling and hosting in-house daily small group meetings to set daily tasks and provide feedback. Another example, use computer software to complete daily tasks. Better if you'd write, use computer software such as Microsoft Office and Excel to complete daily tasks. When you simply list your skills, it only gives employers a general overview. Listing how you came about these skills and experiences gives your resume detail. These details can make or break the first step for you getting into that interview. You want the potential employers to be drawn to your descriptions of your skills. A chronological resume starts by listing your work history with the most recent positions listed first. Because it focuses on most recent work experiences, it is considered one of the most common resume structures. Employers typically prefer this type of resume because it's easy to see what jobs you've held and when you've worked at them. As a result, this structure works well for job seekers with a strong working background. Jobs are listed in reverse chronological order with your current or most recent job first. It often includes an objective before a list of previous work experience. Educations, certifications, and special skills are also included in this type of resume. A chronological resume usually contains these components and in this order. Name and header, job objective, summary of qualifications, professional experience, and education and certification. Your professional experience is listed with the most recent or current role first, followed by the one before that, and so on. Another type of resume is the skills or functional resume. The reason to use a functional resume is that many of us have acquired skills while working that are very transferable. For example, if you've worked as a retail manager, chances are you're responsible for hiring, training, coaching, evaluating, and handling employee relations issues. It still includes all the necessary features of a resume, it's just in a different order. These are best suited for candidates with a history of several short-term positions or internships, significant gaps in their work history, somebody trying to enter into a new career, or somebody with insufficient work experience. Many skills are transferable from one type of job to another. It's also important to note the skills most employers are looking for very often are soft skills or personality. Some say attitude. Here's an infographic that recaps a survey conducted by Accenture in three major cities, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia. They asked employers what skills they're looking for when hiring new employees. 
the top five job skills were consistent across the board. The ability to analyze and synthesize new skills, an ability and willingness to learn, critical thinking and problem solving, interpersonal communication, and collaboration. So be sure to include these components for a functional resume in this order. Name and header, education, job objective, transferable skills, listings, and details. And with those, be as specific on the how as much as the what. And then your past job records, make sure you include the dates, and then certifications and notable accomplishments. And again, make sure the dates are included. The hybrid resume incorporates the best of the chronological and the functional resume formats. It also satisfies demands for timeliness and showcases your marketable skills and accomplishments. It's best suited for students, new graduates, and entry-level job seekers. It's also a good format for those who are trying to change careers. It works well if you want an employer to focus on both your skills and your job history. Be sure to include these components on a hybrid or combination resume name and header, job objective, summary of qualifications, listing of major skill or skills and details of how these were accomplished. And here's the main difference of the hybrid resume. Underneath each skill, list your job experience. Include job titles, length, location, and other important details. Lastly, you include your education and certifications. One resource that Reese suggested for more detailed advice on the hybrid combination resume is SusanIreland.com. Okay, next on our agenda, let's look at the structure of a resume and how each component breaks down. The header at the very top of your resume is really the most important feature. It's a good idea to have your name in the header a couple of sizes bigger than the normal font and use clear font styles such as Cambria, Times New Roman, or Arial in Microsoft Word. The rest of the header needs to include your address, current phone number, a professional email address. What we mean by professional is a formal email address, not something silly like partyguy55 at gmail.com. And then you should include the URL address of your LinkedIn profile. Underneath the header, this is where you can write a statement that's your career objective or you could include a summary of your qualifications or a combination of the two. Your objective statement is your first impression to the employer. It allows the hiring managers to see what your career goals are. You can think of it as a personal statement. Be sure to reference the job opening you're applying for to give your resume a tailored fit to that job position. Objective statements are best suited for resumes for entry-level positions or for somebody changing careers. Here's an example of a well thought out and specific objective. Obtain a full time position in the culinary arts utilizing my extensive experience in food preparation, kitchen and restaurant sanitation, and my ability to work and communicate effectively with diverse employee staff. Some questions to think about. What's the candidate trying to accomplish and at what level? And what skills are being referenced? Is he or she trying to make a career change into a different industry or expanding on his current skill set for a higher position? Next, let's review some tips to writing an effective objective statement. Focus on how you would benefit the employer through your skills. Don't be vague. If possible, reference the title of the job that you're going for. If you'd like to only list your objective, then list up to three skills maximum and reference these throughout your resume. Finally, Make sure that correct spelling and grammar is used in your statement. Okay, now let's talk about a qualification summary. This is a basic summary of your overall skills, and it's best suited for multiple gaps in your job history if you have them. Here's an example of a qualification summary. This one's titled, Highlights of Qualifications. It serves more as an introduction to your skills. Expert knowledge and abilities in written communication, patient listener who fully focuses on speakers and understands a variety of accents, organized and detail-oriented, knack for understanding procedures and logistics, strong skills in time management, prioritizing tasks, and meeting deadlines. Finally, 
Let's take a look at what we just learned side by side to better understand the differences between an objective and qualifications. If you opt to have an objective only, have a very specific objective, and in the statement, include your most important skills. If you opt to have both an objective and a qualification summary, make the objective a general statement that makes reference to the specific position you're going for and highlight your overall skills in the qualification summary before you go into detail. If you decide to write a qualification summary only, do this when you're sending your resume so it's on file with the employer and it's not for a specific job position that's open. But again, if you want to highlight your overall skills, go into more detail. The next section of your resume is where you list your recent work experience. Be sure to list the job title, job location, city location, and specific dates. Try not to use abbreviations, and again, spelling and capitalization are major factors to constantly keep in mind. Your work experience is followed by a section that lists your education. Listing your education should be very short, but depending on the position, and if your education directly applies, then add a bullet point or two to explain more detail. If not, just write the title of your school, your degree, and the date. Remember, spelling and capitalization, again, still count. The last section is for certifications, honors, and awards. The format here is similar to the previous section for education. Be sure to list the full certification name, and when using abbreviations, be sure to define the title beforehand. For example, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act would be abbreviated HIPAA. Okay, now let's talk about formatting and language for the resume. It's very important to format your resume consistently and neatly. Here are some tips on formatting. Use formatting to your advantage to keep your resume organized and inviting to the eye. It's okay to have clear and open space in a resume, and in fact sometimes this is a good thing to make it easier for the reader to follow. Use bold, italics, and underlining sparingly and consistently. Use bullet points to emphasize skill and job experience descriptions and always be consistent. These items include spacing, both horizontal and vertical, and titles that are bold, italic, or underlined, and bullet point spacing and bullet point headings. When describing your work history, make sure to use the present tense when referencing your current position. And then use past tense when describing jobs you've had in the past. Now let's look at some do's and don'ts. Here are some don'ts. Don't use an unprofessional email address. We've talked about that before. Not an informal email address and certainly not an email address with a nickname or a slang or anything unprofessional. Don't hand out a resume with misspelled words, poor grammar, or bad formatting. Don't use short and or general job descriptions and or experiences. Don't use the ampersand symbol. This is important because some employers will electronically scan your resume and then use software to look for keywords. The and sign or the ampersand can be confusing to some software programs and could lead to your resume getting dismissed before a human even sees it. Now for some do's. Do position your name and header clearly at the top. Do include your LinkedIn profile URL on your resume. Use correct spelling and capitalization at all times. and Use consistent pacing and formatting. Use consistent date formatting of month, year, or month, year. Keep your resume to one page. Now, unless you have extensive and relevant work experience, in that case, you can generally stretch it out to two pages. Now let's talk about some interview questions to start thinking about. Of course, walk me through your resume is one of the most common interview questions. Since it's a question you should expect, take the time to practice out loud beforehand how you'd like to answer. A good rule of thumb is to keep your answer down to two minutes or less. And remember to always stay positive and don't complain about previous jobs or previous employers. Hiring managers are always looking for candidates that work well with others, so use this answer as an opportunity to demonstrate that you're a team player. Here's some great tips about how to answer the walk me through your resume question. 
The best answers will describe your resume keeping in mind these things. Your education and achievements, your goals, your major skills, and recent job experience that leads you to these goals. How the position is aligned in your career path and how the company can benefit from hiring you. Now, what are some poor answers? They're either too short or too long or they just ramble on and on. They display a lack of confidence in your resume. Poor answers make no mention of how the position is aligned in your career path and how the company can benefit from hiring you. Okay, here's a great example of how one person answered the question. Note how she has three distinct thoughts, here separated into three different paragraphs. The first paragraph describes her education and why she chose her path. The second paragraph describes the key experience that led to her inspiration, both her work history and her goals. The third paragraph brings it all together and markets the skills to be aligned with her employer's position. Now, I'd like you to pause this video and carefully read through her entire answer. When you come back, we're going to talk about the concept of keeping a master resume on your computer, and then we'll review some technical tips about managing your resume on your machine. Okay, now we're back. Let's talk about the master resume file. It's a good idea to create a master resume for your own personal use. This is a document only to help you organize all of your job skills and history. This serves only as a record and should not be sent directly to any employers. But when you need to build or modify a new resume, you can pull out any specific job or skill from your master resume and paste it into the new one. The master resume document can also be used to cut and paste answers into online job application sites that are popular with many employers. Now let's talk about saving and sending your resume. Be sure to be professional when saving and sending your resume. Save your resume under a naming convention that could include your name, underscore, the name of the company, underscore, the position or the job description. Make sure that you always save it in two different formats, Microsoft Word and PDF. Microsoft Word gives the employers the opportunity to make notes and comments on your resume for the interviews. This format also allows the employer to copy and paste content from your resume into their online system. However, the trade-off of a Word document is that sometimes the formatting will not look the same as you intended due to incompatibility of different versions of the software. This can be solved by also sending a public display file, PDF, version of your resume, which will keep the formatting of your resume the way you intend it. PDF versions are also easier to print. So when emailing your resume, always include a copy of both Word and a copy as a PDF. When using a PC with Microsoft Word software, the program will automatically save your file as a Word document using the extension .doc. To save as a PDF, you need to select File and then Save As and select PDF from the drop-down menu. If you're using a Mac from Apple, the process is similar or you can choose Print and then select the Save as PDF button in the Print menu. Now when you have an in-person interview, make sure you always bring at least three clean copies of your resume with you. Even if you email the copy beforehand, never assume the interviewer will bring the copy with them. It's a good idea to carry your resume in a folder or large envelope to make sure it doesn't get dirty or dog-eared or wrinkled. Also, point out any updates to the resume you hand them if it's been changed since you emailed it to them. Okay, as you can probably guess, your homework from this session is to reach out to your mentor and share the latest version of your resume. He or she will then help you with suggestions and edits to make sure your resume serves as the most powerful tool to get you noticed by employers so you can get that interview and get that job offer. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.